morning to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 5th of July. I'm hurting from on the bratwurst I ate yesterday. My God. <laughs> I tell you what, I went to a buffet once and I had too much bratwurst and sausages. Mm -hmm. Greasy. Yes. I was sick for a couple days. Yeah, Have you no. ever done that before? We ain't used to all that grease. No. <laughs> no. Doesn't even sound good to me. Well, I wasn't thinking about it. It was like a lunch buffet. And oh, I was yeah. like, oh, well, this is good. Like, I'm, I'll eat like three hot dogs. Like, it was like the hot dog sausages. And I was like, oh, well, this would be fine. I'll eat this and some potato salad. Was this at downtown? Yeah, oh, at yeah. that Market Street place. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect, you know. For the next couple of days, I was just like bloated and I just didn't mm, feel right. That's how I feel today. I was like thinking, what is going on? And then I was like, you know, that fat content in those, <laughs> in those sausages is probably what got me. My body's used to chicken. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're in your mid 30s, you have to be careful with, you know, my body can't process those things. Oh my right. God, you're mid 30s. <laughs> Well, Josh and I were just talking while we were waiting on a woman to get here. Hey, I had to stop and get gas. I went ahead and dropped all of those packages off in Parker just so that it's not quite as far as to walk in with this heavy ass box is what it is in Wabash. Lazy. No, it's just... I'm, Less to walk. I'm an a woman. A woman? Did you stop at the P.O. box? And I did. No. Did we get anything? We did. I'm oh, good. What did we get? We got a postcard. Oh, are you going to read it? I told you last time, I am the mail getter. You guys are the mail <laughs> readers. Oh, Lord. You're hearing it now, everybody. Kim can't read. Here, Josh, I did I'll not let you say read that. this one. <laughs> oh, it's the longest. <laughs> Boy, that bless their handwriting. I could never fit that much on there. It says, Dead Time Stories, Books and Gifts. Dogs bite awareness. They do indeed bite. From Grand Rapids, Michigan. The Birkin Burker. The Burker. Sorry if that's wrong. <laughs> Howdy, gang. It's time that I admit that I've become, in my family, a typical Martin. I mean, better late than never, or I'd be late to my own funeral. But you're finally getting my postcard. This postcard, what's on the front, is what I would find... A rare commodity and favorite bookstore in my eyes. The owners happen to be a podcaster. I have so many thoughts to write, but no room to fit. I just want to thank y'all for the stories, wisecracks, and laughs, and forever friendship. Love yours truly, Janie Hannah. XXOOXX. She made an O face, the O, like a sex doll. I love it. You do listen. She must yeah. be one of my fans. How cute. <laughs> I've How heard of Dead cute. Time Stories. Yeah, that's fun. I have heard of it. Thank yeah. you so much. We'll put it the, on our whole. I like her The place writing. that she's yeah. talking about? That place? The, the, it's a podcast. It's called Dead oh, Time Stories. Oh, I see. I mean, I could you not just I listen to her place. whole... She just she was, she was getting her hook and I started. I just got here. Yes, I, I'm working on a new pattern now that I have my other one done. So I was kind of counting <laughs> one yeah I, two, it wasn't three. the handwriting's beautiful like the difficulty reading was just because it's oh I've, okay. I've learned in postcards <laughs> that the ink often gets like, oh yeah smeared a little smeared bit. a little yeah. smeared but it's beautiful thank you so much Janie that's awesome all right. I'll put oh, it on our wall after this. Our wall of postcards. And they're starting to get more and more postcards up there. I love it. Me too. I'm all about the maximalist decoration. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a wall. Of, it's to that point where the last time the internet guy came and I told him, oh, we're going to put the router in my room. And I opened the door and he's like, oh, is this the kid's room? <laughs> I was like, nope, just mm, a 30-year-old yeah. gay man's room. <laughs> Similar to a teenage Girls. girl's room. Posters of boys on the wall. Right. <laughs> yeah. Josh, I have a, a really special little surprise for you today. Ooh, your whisker biscuit. Oh. oh. It's all yours. Read my shirt. Oh. oh. Dearest gentle reader, did you miss me? 
<laughs> L whistle down. I love it. Kim finally finished the part two of was the season three, four. Yeah, three. It was oh, three. So good. I'm almost done with a book, so I'm gonna start on those books. That crazy sister. I told you we was getting bugs and they're butterflies. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was cracking me up. Emily has actually binge watched all three seasons oh, now. Good. I, I was talking to her about it too. <laughs> yeah, we were kind of watching it on and off. You know, I started watching it. She had had the first season done. And I kind of watched on and off with her the second one. And I'm like, man, I really need to go back and watch this again. <laughs> watch this again because I forget what happens. And Deepest gentle reader. Did you hear that the next season is not going to come out until like 2026? Yes. Why so long? I don't know, but I'm not happy about it. It's one of those where I have to like make myself forget about it <laughs> until I start seeing like, you know, previews for it and stuff. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, when stuff takes too long to come out, I have to, like, forget well, about it. It's been a long time since that Lord of the Rings series has yeah, been Yeah, I mean, it came out last September. I feel like it's been longer than that. Has it? I feel like it's been two years. How long have you lived here? I live, I've lived in my house for two years. Okay. Yeah. Then, dang. I'm excited for that. I'm watching House of Dragon, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, which is funny because... I feel like House of Dragon and Bridgerton are two opposite ends of the spectrum. It shows you uh, basically both sides of my personality. (laughs) (laughs) I told Emily that she has to watch Queen Charlotte now. Oh, yeah. And I told her, I said, you can't watch it unless I'm watching it, too, because I forget everything that happened in that. I like Queen Charlotte a little bit more than, like, the first, the new season of Bridgerton's my favorite, but then it's Queen Charlotte, then it's the other two Bridgerton's. I love what they did to Penelope in this episode yes how they glammed her up and mm-hmm. made her look so sophisticated and uh, never, beautiful never seen such a piece of cake be eaten mm-hmm. so sexy she, yeah she's something mm. after the last two seasons she was kind of an eclectic very loud colored oh, yeah. dresses and yeah and she's now a, she's very a ginger and, in the show and they had her in like yellows and oranges and just no no yeah gaudy colors now they, they dressed her it. pretty and she got fingered in a carriage. <laughs> yeah, I got like 15 minutes left on this book that I'm reading. And before I leave here, I will be, I'll will be looking up and trying to get the first book from Bridgerton <laughs> so I can start that series. I, I still haven't finished the first book. I, um, I only usually listen to the books when I'm like alone driving. If I don't listen to a podcast, I've become i've switched from listening to music often in the car to now i'm like i know i have to hear somebody speaking like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> or i get nervous or i get nervous <laughs> <laughs> i like listening to books and while i'm driving i because usually when i'm driving that's when my mind just kind of i need to do this you know i need to do that it kind of reels my brain in a little bit to where i can just kind of chill Soon as Kim figures out how to crochet and drive, Lord help us all. Oh, wow. mm. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. No, I'm really excited to start this new one, though. What's I, it going to be? Um, this is the one that's kind of Native American. Hmm. It looks okay. like it's kind of a Native American flair to it. It's done with like granny squares. So I'm very excited. About You're it. special. You're special to granny squares. You know what? I just, that made me think of a question. America, I mean, I I just, I knew it, but I just saw it this morning, was named after an explorer, Americus, something like that, which is, I mean, funny. Chris Columbus discovered it, you know, but didn't get it named after him, which screw you, Chris Columbus, you're a horrible murderer. What would he have named it if they'd have named it after him? Who knows, Christopher or something. (laughs) But it just, it made me think of the question, what did Native Americans call this landmass before? I'll have to look that up. I don't know that they told us when we went to Yeah, I don't recall ever hearing like what they, just the land. I don't know if there was like a specific name they had for. Well, I know that they always had their own like theories on. Like how the earth started, like how their land started. Yeah. So like the Cherokee believe that it started 
where they lived. Okay. So I think that they just... The world, you know. The, yeah. Like the whole, all the land just started at that point. I really like the giant turtle earth theory. Mm. That we're living on like just the shell of a giant turtle. But I also wonder if it's more of a European thing that things have to have names. Probably. And named Maybe. after people. Yeah. Gotta have recognition. So it may not be a Native American thing that mm -hmm. things had to... Maybe. Like the land had to have a name and it had to be owned by people, maybe. I don't know. That was just my battling acid reflex this morning thoughts. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, oh, it hurts. How can I distract myself? What a Native American. I had it's, funny that, it's funny that we're talking about Native American because my next mystery on the next show... Is Native American. Oh, Something perfect. with Native American. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait to see the blanket. It's going to be really cool. So yesterday was the 4th of July. What did you do, Josh, on the 4th of July? I went to my best friend's and had a, a cookout, and gab sesh, <laughs> and we waxed our armpits. <laughs> that's what Kim and I did, too. <laughs> Sat there and just waxed each just other's armpits. waxed armpil. each other's armpits. <laughs> Karen and I went to the Delaware County Fairgrounds. Well, we went to Pizza King first. Yeah, we did. With my That's daughter. That's near Emily's new house. Mm -hmm. So we went, we met Emily's daughter, or Emily's daughter, good God. We met Kim's daughter, Emily, and Emily's boy toy, or her husband, as she calls him. <laughs> boy toy. Yeah. So we all had dinner there. It was really fun. And then we went over to the fairgrounds. And it was really fun. You know, there are people who just like and enjoy to set off fireworks. I get it. I have no problem. But I think that there are these people who are now buying their fireworks off of Timu. Oh, God. I mean, it's a theory <laughs> of mine. Generic fireworks. Yeah, because... Well, they, all fireworks are from China. Most, you know... Yeah, but I think that these fireworks specifically, like, let off extra smoke. They're, they seem a little... Extra. cheaper and they were not smoke as, bombs they're just like not What's made as point? well i think unless it's a pretty colored one that's what i think we i'm thinking why the are they just so smoky like yeah just i don't have a point to them. away the mosquitoes well i right? got bit twice and i usually get swarmed when i'm outside ate up as we would say here in indiana yeah, that's because you up. got the beat us she got ate up i'd get ate up ate but up. when we got out of the car it was so smoky and it stunk so bad from those smoke bombs. I was like, because we just ate pizza, you know, oh, and yeah. I was like, ah, that's gross. My nephew was doing the, he got like really loud. The ones that go, pow, are loud. I hate them. Are those are bottle crackers? rockets. Yeah, sure. Well, they have like extra heavy duty loud ones now, not the mm -hmm. little poppets. Like, and I'm like, my God. Oh, I'm the like, ones that you throw at the ground? Yeah. Those are called poppets, I okay. think. Okay. Well, it made me realize, I was like, God, I was such a gay child. Most boys are like, I want the bottle rockets and the things that go loud. And I'm like, give me a, a lovely sparkler. Well, nice sparkler. Right. And I'm going to pretend I'm a fairy dancing in the yard. We <laughs> were somewhere the other day with Emily and Brady. I can't remember where we were at. Oh, I know where we were at. We were at Menards because we were looking for paint colors for their new house. Because they'll be closing on it in the next little over a week or so. Oh, good. And yeah, by the time this actually airs, they should be moved in. So we were walking through there and Brady's like, what in the hell is this? It was a huge sparkler. I mean, oh, like yeah. half half of my height. And I'm like, my God, that's one heck of a sparkler. Oh, I bought a dozen. And that's why people end up in the ER yep. on the 4th of July. A lot of thumbs See, went to heaven uh, last night. I never would do sparklers because I got popped and, and burnt by one once, and I would never do them afterwards. Hell I haven't yeah. done them in years. That ain't nothing compared that to cooking bacon. That was when I was a bacon. kid. Right. <laughs> uh, Someone ain't cooked food. enough bacon. Yeah, but I was a kid you when have, that happened, too. So still, You still have feeling in your head? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they came out with those little screens that go over your pan when oh, you're frying yeah. bacon. Yeah. Grandma and us, we just all thought it was like, oh, my God, finally. It right. doesn't hurt to cook bacon anymore. Who needs the invention of the computer when you have this screen put for the, the top oven. of your bacon? That's what I do now. Yeah, put it yeah. in the oven and it won't pop you. So much oh, yeah. easier. Yeah. But boom, boom. <laughs> look, we already got off track. <laughs> but anyway, so Kim and I get to the fairgrounds and we get set up and it was real nice. <sighs> <laughs> 
Kim over here, she can't go anywhere without finding her something to flirt with. Oh, Lord. This man and his wife. And his wife. Come over and park next to us, and he sets up his little speaker. Hey, he started it. And one of the nice things about the Muncie fireworks is that they set it off to music. Oh, so yeah. So you play the, the mm-hmm. radio, and they set it off All to music. independent. Right, exactly. And so he was listening to music before the fireworks started, and so he's just playing random music. No, he, he was not. He was playing 80s rock. He was listening to ACDC, oh, and I goody. said, "I said, now that is a man that knows some good music. That's too much for my taste. So Kim's starting to flirt with him. I did not. She's like, ACDC well, makes my a panties man who, come off. That's exactly what she was whispering to him. <laughs> and he's like, thank you very much, man. There was a thank song you, that Grandma. came on. Mm-hmm. There was a song that came on. And I, it always that song always reminds me of Maximum Overdrive because it was in that movie. And Never I it. said, hey, do you know what movie that was in? And he's like, yeah, I've seen that movie a hundred times. I love that movie. I said, Maximum Overdrive. And he's like, yeah, that's it. He couldn't remember the Meanwhile, name of it. Meanwhile, his wife is, I mean, the entire time, even during the fireworks, Imagine. is just, no, she's uh-huh. just playing uh-huh. a she's game on her phone. phone. Has no care in the world. She's probably like, take him. I don't care. Right. You know? I'm tired of him. Uh-huh. He's a nice guy. Kim's over there like, I got room in my basement. You you can I have take no his more room in my basement. Mm-hmm. The next to the hamper. Mm-hmm. I have no more room in my basement. There's already four. He would have to go to the attic. Well, that's fine. And maybe, I mean, he has such a nice taste in music. You can give him access to your Wi-Fi and let him that's have true. access to control the music to your Amazon. That's very true. There you go. Lord help us. She's just over there all over him. I thought, oh, well, we have an extra seat in the Some car. Some of us I guess. are just natural flirts, even she when was. we're not... We don't know we're flirting. People think we're flirting. We just, I, I blink a lot. My eyes are real dry and people think it's. <laughs> I was just waiting for her to say, oh my gosh, my chair broke. Hey, I wish there was somewhere else I could sit out here. <laughs> I am a huge flirt. I will, I will completely agree. I am a huge flirt. So Brady, he's working at a company in Muncie. And one of the guys that he works with, Shane and I worked with in hell. Well, he, once he figured out that he knew me, because I told Brady, I said, I know a guy that used to work there. I don't know if he still does. Told him his name. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he says, yeah, I met him today. That old B word. So right. the next day he goes to work and he says, he says, you were to work in hell, right? And he's like, yeah. Don't remind me. Why? Right. And he Biggest says, secret I wouldn't, I wouldn't have shared. And he said, I think you know my mother in law. And the guy says, Well, who is she? And he told him who I was. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, I remember her. So he proceeds to tell about the story that happened when oh, we God. worked there. So the all the guys used to do No Shave November, right? Yeah. Well, we always worked such long hours on the last two days of the month. The last, very last day of the month, all of the guys that did no shave November, which all of them on our team would do it, they would go to the bathroom, shave their beard off, and leave their mustache. So that day, he went to the bathroom, shaved his beard off, left his mustache. So, of course, when he comes back out, we were not the most appropriate team. No. And I do not believe it for a second. (laughs) Probably no, nobody on my team should have been working there. What's well, HR or office? Exactly. Advocate. Yeah, we used <laughs> we used to do sexual harassment uh, tests every year. We used to have to do, and I always told them I just answered the opposite of what I would actually do. <laughs> I would have failed that test if I walked into a building full of bearded men in November. <laughs> Fire me now! It's worth it. But he goes to the bathroom, he shaves his beard off, and he comes out. So somebody had made a comment about a mustache ride, okay? Oh, yeah. So I take two quarters out of my pocket, and I slide it over to him. <laughs> and I told him, I said, you ever open for business, you let me know, and winked at him, right? <laughs> so he proceeds to tell my son-in-law this story. So what did I do? I took a picture of two quarters Sent it to him through Facebook, and I said, hey, baby, the offer still stands. 
<laughs> Mama's been itching. <laughs> yeah, I was really bad with a lot of the guys there. That's funny. I also sent home. a picture of two quarters to my friend this week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was, I accidentally became a sex worker. Right. A guy went to put his pants back on and change fell out of his pocket. The next day I was cleaning up and I found two quarters on the floor and I was like, he paid me. Oh my God. I was like, oh, 50 cents. Oh, the talk about cost of living crisis. I swear. 50 cents. Oh my Lord. I'm going to go to Meyer and ride that purple dinosaur 50 times if no it's still kidding. a penny. <laughs> it might be. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking Kim, where is hell? Where did Shane and Kim used to I work? If they I were, were, no one yeah. there, has been, there has been people who have been asking. Yes, there's yeah. a couple people that who has asked. However, I am not going to re If you want to know, you send me an email and I'll tell you, but I'm not going to say it over the I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say it. You're going to Here say it. Here it is. We were strippers. Oh. <laughs> we were strippers. Mm -hmm. My yeah. stripper name was Fluffernutter. 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 We were stripping. Mm -hmm. The dance hall was called the Crispy Bucket. We were. <laughs> they paid us by the pound, too. We made a lot of money. <laughs> they had an all you can eat, a loaded mashed potato they bar. <laughs> they Ridiculous. Kim, was your was your stripper named Tiny? I can't remember. Yeah, that's I exactly what it was. That's what my grandpa used to call me. Tiny? Tiny. Her oh. stripper name was Two Piece and a Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awful. Horrible, just horrible no, human I th beings. I think people used to call her Fried Baloney. Fried Baloney. <laughs> hey, Fried Baloney, how you doing? Baloney. 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 <laughs> You fry blown. <laughs> Bless her little heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, has Shane said anything to you about an adventure next week? Yeah, he mentioned yeah, it he while I was her. making coffee. Yeah. Any ideas where we should go? He didn't say next week, though. He did not mention a time at all whatsoever. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be next week sometime. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we could. Yeah. Anytime, really. Yeah. We need to figure out where we want to go so we can take our Patreons with us. Yeah. Whenever. Mm -hmm. Wherever, wherever you hot guys Springs think. National Park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just itching to get in the hot spring. There's too many people in hot tubs. When you, wherever, like you know, if, right. wherever you find one at. My God, remember that one time we all went to? Yeah, it was in Severville at that hotel, and there was that old Father man. Time. Yeah, no, Father Time. Every time Kim wanted to go to the hot tub. No, there it was, was Josh. Oh yeah. Every time he wanted to go to the hot tub, Father Time was in we there. We got a oh, room that like man. overlooked the pool, so yeah. we could see right there. I'm like, oh, I want to get in there, but Father Time's in there soaking his beans. Oh my god. That was that time. <laughs> in an effort to save money, we were cooking <laughs> in the hotel, and we. <sighs> I was like, oh, I'm going to make chili for tomorrow. We're going to leave early. Let me cook the ground beef while we sleep right. tonight in the crock pot. And normally I do not sleep very much at a hotel. So I was like, no, I'll be up to check it. Nope, I slept through the night. <laughs> we woke up to a hotel room filled oh, with oniony ground so bad. smell. Didn't I we mean, just it was... pick it up and put it, in, put it on the balcony? Yeah. I think so. Oh, my God. Chili was good later that night. But that was. morning, we were all like, <laughs> beef in the 8 a.m. <laughs> What's a state you guys haven't been to? Around here? There's not any close that we've not. That's what I'm trying to think. Wisconsin. We've not been I'm to. Not, I've never been to Wisconsin. I she have. has. She's Go been find Betty White. Slightly White's. into it. Gravesite. Betty White's in Wisconsin. I think so. Well, they've never or announced Illinois. where she's oh, at. Oh, I know, uh, I know. I'm just guessing by her right. husband. Let's go find his. <laughs> right. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, but just south of Cincinnati is where, um, oh my gosh, what is her name? The lady who plays on, oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. You went there once, didn't you? No, I've never been there. Oh. The lady who plays on White Christmas she is the great aunt. Oh, George Clooney's name? George, no, her. it's his great aunt. Okay. Rosemary Clooney. Okay. Yeah, that's where she's buried. Oh, I thought you had been there before. No, I've never been there. I'd Maybe like to you there. had just told me. Yeah. They have a really cool aquarium in Cincinnati. Yeah, have I've been ever, there once. Have you? Yeah. Have you ever been to that? How about anywhere but Ohio? <laughs> I've been there well, enough. 
The Cincinnati one is actually not in Ohio. It's in Kentucky. Yeah, it's in Kentucky. Oh, okay. Newport. It's in Newport. Mm -hmm. yeah, Which is just right over the river. Yeah. You can see the Cincinnati Stadium across the river. Okay. From it. It's a cool place. They have that gangster tour I've done before. That's the one where they talk about the chicken glasses. The rose-colored glasses. Mm -hmm, that they put on chickens. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, sometimes chicken farmers, I didn't know this, because chickens can, like, murder each other. Cannibals. Yeah. So, like, if one of them starts bleeding, they'll, I mean, the whole bunch will just start killing each other. So they learn that if they put, like, these rose-colored glasses on them, they'll if not they're... start killing each other. Yeah, Is if they see the, anything the red. the sand came from? Kind of, yeah. I think. Who knew? Yeah, chickens instinctively, when they see red, they like peck at it. So if yeah. one chicken has like a cut, usually after a rooster's done mating with them, because they're quite aggressive, they'll like peck it till it dies. But if everything's red, you can't. I just see a whole bunch of chickens pecking everywhere. Oh. Have you ever seen a rooster, Cam? Yes, I've seen a rooster. <laughs> I live in the damn country. How can I not she see a rooster? No. <laughs> Our mom had roosters once, and I, I had never roosters. seen a rooster before then. But that thing was a huge ass rooster. Mm -hmm. And I went over to their house one time. It's a big black cock. Yeah. And I got out of my car, and this huge rooster, I thought it was a little dragon. Yeah. Came running, and evidently it didn't like men. You thought it was a little dragon. They have yeah. little, it was, it was yeah. a huge black. I forget what kind it was, but the it was spurs aggressive. are huge. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it started chasing me. And I was like running okay. around my car and my mom's yelling at it and then yelling at me because I was trying to kick at it. They're like cats. If you handle roosters when they're young, they'll be friendly to at least, you know, the people they're used to. Yeah, yeah. But then they won't leave you alone. They want to sit there and be petted oh. like a damn dog. Mm -mm. Really? I've, if you listeners don't know, I've had chicken. <laughs> when people were panic buying during the COVID, when at first everyone's running to the store, and I'm like, I got to get chickens. <laughs> I did. Me and my friends, we went together and got like a whole flock of chickens, and we had chickens and eggs. Oh, and... my God. <laughs> did you panic buy anything, Kim? No, but I was almost out of toilet paper, and I could not find toilet paper anywhere. Because everybody was going nuts over the toilet paper. Did you have to use no, your hand? No, Emily had been going, she had went out shopping. And every place that we had tried find, you know, looking, they didn't have any. And they didn't even have any of those flushable ones. Oh, you know, no. the wipe type things. So Emily had stopped on her way home from somewhere. God, I don't know. And she called me. She says, Mom, they have one thing of those wipes. Do you want me to get it? I said, well, that's better than absolutely nothing, you know. And so she did get it, and we didn't even have to. I think I still had like a roll, maybe two, but I know I was getting really low. But I think we finally did find it before we Start even had to. Sparingly. Yeah, had to use the wipes. One ply, right? One square per person. I got it's lucky. Like prison. You get one square. Well, here you go. One square. We had just gotten a whole bunch of like a big bulk pack box of like baby wipes. I don't even know why we didn't have babies. I don't know why we had them, but we did. So I I didn't have to buy toilet paper. I'm like, oh, look fancy, baby wipes. But then I felt bad. I knew a couple of people I worked with that had actual babies and were like, we can't find wipes and diapers. And I was like, <laughs> I'm bringing them to work. Like a, a bag of cocaine or something. Like, here you go. Don't tell anybody where you got this from. <laughs> I remember when it, and when we were right in the thick of COVID, like you didn't know how you were going to get it. And so I remember like ordering groceries and they would deliver it to the house and it'd come to the front porch and taking a big bottle of Lysol and going out there and just spraying it down because you're like, I'm not getting it. I think you might've been a little bit more worried about it than what I was. Cause I remember you. I had asthma. So I was, I was worried I was going to get it. Well, I mean, you, I don't know how many times you would text me and say, do you want me to send you groceries? Do you want me to have some groceries sent to you? No, I was going freaking nuts sitting in the house. I went to the grocery <laughs> once a week. That was the only place I went. I'm like, no, he ain't sending me nothing. I got to get out of the house. Uh, I was a, an essential worker. So I like, 
my life did not really change besides not being able to go to the grocery store, right. which I don't really, I didn't do that often. I just went to work and went home. I'm like, I'm still the same. Right. Now. The only difference is, is I have to now wear like a face mask and a face shield. It did get very scary when they started having to hand out cards to us in case we get pulled over by the police for mm-hmm. being out on the roads and, you know, driving to work in the morning and you're the only car on the road and the only other vehicles are like army trucks. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't like this. I remember like a, a day or two before they actually shut things down, we kind of knew that that was headed towards there. And I remember going to... I can't remember if it was Michael's or Hobby Lobby, maybe. I think it was Michael's. Could have been Hobby Lobby. Just make one up. One of the two. One of the two. Best Buy. I remember going there and buying a bunch of yarn because I'm like, if I'm going to be sitting at home, I got to. Yeah, I got a bunch of different stuff so that I could make crafts. I started my Christmas crafts (laughs) in. What was it? The, that that was March, wasn't it? March, I think. Yeah. Well, you, you, you'll notice a lot of like Dollar Tree and Dollar General. That's what we have around here. A lot of them now have a large craft section mm-hmm. because that was, you know, a lot of if with if you had at least that, you could remain open. Mm. So now they're like, ah, 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 we got crafts now. Look, hot glue gun. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, it was an interesting time. It definitely was. I'm glad it's over. Right. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I don't really care to do that again. No. <laughs> Although oh. I'm quite introverted, so for me it wasn't that bad. But I can right. see like people who are used to like, mm-hmm. like ooh. I've gotten really bad. I mean, we were able to start working from home. We got equipment to be able to start work from home when I worked in health for that because that's where it worked, and so it didn't. I mean, it drove me crazy until they kind of laxed things a little bit to where you could go out. Right. And then I'm like, I'm used to staying at home now. I don't want to go nowhere. And I still struggle with that on occasion. I'll make plans with somebody or whatever. And when it comes time to get ready to go, I'm like. Oh, well, your dog go. got used to it. Why did I agree yes, to my this? Dog, my dog was only a puppy. He was under a year old when we went through the lockdown. And he didn't have to be locked in a cage while I was at work anymore, you know. So now he has huge separation anxiety if I leave. How dare you house. leave? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is awful if I leave the house. My dog could care less. She sees me get my shoes on. She goes to her little kennel. I don't lock her in there or anything. She just that's her safe place when no one's home. No one no predators can find her there. I have her trained to always be on the lookout for predators. Emily's I dog. Do. She's so little. When I'm walking, if I see a shadow like of a big bird over me i'll go like, predator mm-hmm. and she'll come uh, real close to my leg <laughs> oh my god makes Sweet. me think of the <laughs> makes me think of that stupid movie the proposal well yes i'm <laughs> terrified we have bald eagles around here they could easily <laughs> swoop up my little chihuahua i would i like i would just die I I it's already happened to a chicken of mine that was terrifying enough i could right. imagine a dog chicken. we should do that when we're out kim Anytime we see a predator, I'll just yell, predator! I just <laughs> run to my way. That's I've funny. gotten a few <laughs> weird looks sometimes from other people predator. on the trails. Because I'll just be, she'll be, I'll be, predator! Sometimes I do it just to keep her sharp. Like, you always got to be a lookout. <laughs> they do make little vests for smaller dogs, though. To They have, like, little spikes on them. So, like, a bird of prey can't oh swoop up or a coyote can't come through and, like, grab them. But we don't. I can see you getting her one. I've thought though. about it. I feel like I'm big enough to where Coyote wouldn't like try to even come yeah. near me. They're so puny. That's but a bald eagle, they're quick. It's still, I feel like it's right in my face. And that's why you're not married anymore, Kim. You don't like the distraction. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, Josh, what do you have for us today? Let's see. I, Let's for, find out. <laughs> I forgot I wrote it, and I was working on one earlier this week, and I was like, wait, I've already had, I printed it out. It's right there on the table. I just, well, I told Shane we when to we it. went last night to the, to the fireworks and stuff, I said, I got to go home and figure out a mystery for when we record tomorrow. And he's like, 
Or I said, well, I guess I could use the one that I wrote, but I don't think I like that one very well, but I, that's what I'm I've done that before, written one, and I'm like, mm, I feel yeah, like I, I could find a better one. one. Yeah. Well, Shane and Kim, have you ever had a psychic experience? Yes. You have? Mm-hmm. Do tell. Shane, for Christmas one year, he had chip coffee give me a oh, no i mean you personally like have you ever had any like oh no i mean I... sometimes i'll have premonitions that something's going to happen and it does but that doesn't happen very or often like mother intuition mm-hmm. and... yeah well there are many types of psychic powers i'm using for lack of a better word because it's early <laughs> this is my first cup of coffee i guess i really have me. I was going to say, most mothers... I I guess I really have, because from... This is going to sound really weird. But from the time Amber was born, I always felt like that she was not going to live very old. But I never knew why. A lot of people have had similar... Yeah. And I think that's why, number one, she got away with as much as she did. And number two, every year for her birthday, she didn't have a birthday. She had a birth week. And we would do something just about every day throughout the week of her birthday. And I think that was kind of, you know, the universe telling us that this is how we have to do her birthday to, you know, make her old. But I don't know. It was really weird because there for for a long time when she was born, I was like, I I really don't feel like she's going to live very long. But, of course, we had that scare with uh, leukemia also oh, yes. when she was little. But I had always felt for a long time that I didn't think she would live very long. I heard even our own grandfather knew when he was going to die. Like, the year of, he kept saying repeatedly, like, this is, I ain't going to make it past this year. And he was right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to live to be 104 years old. <laughs> And still have the same body you do now. Yeah. <laughs> Get a new cyborg body. <laughs> well, there are many types of psychic powers, and almost everyone has tapped into a few on occasion. Those who can talk to spirit, those who feel someone else's emotions in their own body, people can see someone else's life path, or even the ability to feel positive or negative things before they happen. Just to name a few. Well, our mystery today was allegedly gifted with the gift of precognition, which is the ability to see or become aware of events in the future. We've covered a few psychics here already, even a possible psychic horse. I still found that so fascinating. Mm -hmm. But one of history's most accurate and famous psychics has yet to be mentioned. I relearned about him when I found a book about his predictions at a used bookstore, and since then, I've been entranced by his interesting prophecies. He was a man of many talents, which I did not know. He was an astrologer, apothecary, doctor, and a renowned seer of future events, even up until the end of days. His books are now known as the greatest works of prophecy in human history. His name was Michel de Nostradame, or as we might know him, Nostradamus. He was born in saint remy France in 1503, but didn't begin receiving prophetic images until after 1547, when there was an outbreak of the plague. Now, no one knows what started his gift to emerge, But some, including myself, believe it was from the trauma of grief. During the plague, he worked as a doctor, and he lost his wife and two children to it still. And it was shortly after that when he began receiving visions. I like about Nostradamus is he seemed to have a high level of common sense, which, especially at that time in history, was not a gift most people had. And history repeats itself, because it's like today. God bless him. (laughs) He helped save many people during the plague using his common sense by figuring out that proper hygiene, removing dead bodies, and getting fresh air out in nature could help people not catch the plague. Which, I mean, of course, you're getting away from the crowded city of dead people. Yeah, that'll help. Mm -hmm. 
But the loss of his family, even though he helped save so many others, obliterated his heart. After he gave up healing for a long time, he disappeared for several years and began to wander. During that time, he began delving into spiritual practices and started seeing the future. Allegedly. No one knows still today what he did when or where he went during those ten years of wandering, and it's even called in history the lost years of Nostradamus. Kind of like Jesus, how he wandered. Nobody's really sure what he did. Mm-hmm. I think he married, married Mary Magdalene and had some kids, but that's just <laughs> me. He published his first predictions in a series of books, and when they began coming true, he started to gain fame. This was at a time when astrology was at its peak, and there was a lot of competition among his peers. But because of his accuracy with his prophecies, he gained so much popularity that he even began helping royalty. In his first series of books, there are over 6,000 prophecies, and a lot of them were accurate. He did horoscopes, gave psychic advice, and even helped with war plans for poor people like Catherine de Messi and her husband, King Henry II of France. So he's pretty damn popular helping out royalty. Right. And it is said that he was actually terrified by his visions. I mean, being able to see every war and bad thing that happens to humanity for the rest of time in your dreams would kind of put a person on edge a little. I mean, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'd be afraid to sleep. Yep. Not only was he afraid of his visions, but he was also afraid of being arrested for heresy by the Catholic Inquisition. He never was, though, although you'd think that'd be something they would have arrested someone for. But for some reason, prophecy or astrology weren't banned by the church at that time. It was only if he would have began doing magic as well would he have been in danger. Molly, you in danger, girl. I watched that the (laughs) other day. (laughs) I love ghosts. It is even said that he knew when he was going to die. He never told anyone until the night before his death in 1567. Nostradamus had told his secretary you will not find me alive at sunrise. And the following morning, she found him dead next to his bed. There are a lot of his prophecies that did not come true, but these are a couple of his more famous ones that he predicted and turned out to actually happen eventually. He predicted the death of King Henry II, which, I mean, everybody dies, so predicting their death ain't ain't too off. He did predict the Great Fire of London, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Kennedy assassination, and the most chilling of all, the coming of Adolf Hitler, which I'll read a little bit of. His prediction was a young child will a young child will be born of poor people. And what does this child do? He will, by his tongue, seduce a great troop and his fame will spread far beyond Europe. But in the prediction, he did get the name wrong, but only slightly. In it, he called the guy Hister instead of Hitler. I thought that was a little Mm. very... Especially, I mean, this was in the 1500s when Nostradamus was alive for him to... It's just a very close prediction. Mm Mm-hmm. And did you guys know that Hitler was saved as a child from drowning? Mm-hmm. The universe literally gave us two opportunities to stop him before he rose to power. I th- that was just when I read that, I was like, oh my God, it literally threw us like, here, Nostradamus predicted it, and then, oh, mm-hmm. I'll just kill him before he grows up. And But that, that guy had to save him. Two, what was the other one? I knew he almost drowned, but what was the other one? No, uh, if you believe in Nostradamus, his prediction that he was coming. I see. People still love Nostradamus, though, and his predictions. But because they are pretty vague and don't mention specific dates, most of them, 
That makes it easy for his fans to bring them up after big events and say that they're still accurate. I've noticed a lot of internet psychics will do that. They'll publish predictions like, a great mountain will spew the heart of the earth into the surface. Then the next time a volcano erupts anywhere in the world, they're like, see, See, I'm I'm psychic, (laughs) I predicted it. One thing I do like to do on New Year's Eve is look up the predictions that Nostradamus had for the new year, just for, you know, shits and giggles. Oh, see, I I can't do that. Really? He, he's been right on so many different things that I just like, I, I would rather not know oh, God. if well, something is he's going to say is right. Well, for 2024, oh, you want to find out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> of course I had to look up. He predicted that climate change, which wasn't even a thought back in his time, would worsen. His prediction was the dry earth will grow more parched and there will be great floods when it is seen. He also predicted a new pope this year. Through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Even that there will be some uprising among the British royals. The king of isles will be driven out by force. One who will have no mark of a king will assume the throne. Many people think that that means Prince Harry will somehow <laughs> take over when his father is no longer king, which I don't doubtful. Think yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he gave up that. You lost that right when you put out a Netflix documentary. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but... When you come from old money, that's the white trashiest thing mm-hmm. you could do. Air well, out dirty laundry. Like oh, I know. Yeah, oh, they would not handle that. No, I'm. You know, he can do what he wants. He's a grown man. I don't care. But like, how dare you air out the British dirty laundry like <laughs> that? That's old money, trash, trash, trash. <laughs> you listened to it though, didn't you? What did you listen to his book? No, I I could give two shits. I did. <laughs> talking can, about can, Prince. Can give All I know shit. in it is uh, talking about Prince William's frostbite on his pecker or mm-hmm. something like that. And I'm like, I don't care, Harry. No, like, no I thought it was Harry. It I was Harry. It was his. Yeah, it was his. Oh, I thought he was telling about. Uh, mm-hmm. See, I didn't read it. I didn't finish it because it just. Not if it was Princess Diana. Yeah. But Harry, I don't care. It was you just, just a bunch of rambling. I, I couldn't. I only liked Harry till he was no longer on the market, and then he became dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Same with William. I liked him till he got married and became ugly. What happened? He was so cute. Life got sucked yeah. out. As a teen boy, you know, they were just a few years older than me. So, right. you know, they were like heartthrow. Real life princes. So cute. And you I thought love one the of ginger them might one, be gay? right? Mm-hmm. I was hoping Harry would swing my way, mm-hmm. but. Even Prince William was real cute, but I don't know what those his daddy's genes just ate up anything and Diana left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, no. Oh. Well, so <laughs> Sorry if that offends any British people. Just my th- thoughts and opinions. Well, some of Nostradamus's fans even credit him for predicting the COVID pandemic. His prediction was, near the gates and within two cities, there will be two scourges, the like of which was never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal God for relief. Yeah, and didn't he predict that it would go away and then it'd come back? I'm not sure I didn't look into it that much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, I, I'm pretty sure that he did, that it, he said that it would go away and then yeah, but by this description, this is like what going to Walmart is for me. Yeah, so Scourges, famine, is crying out mm-hmm. to God to end it. <laughs> yeah. That's what, like... It's not, it, I mean, it's like half the people on my Facebook, it's them crying out to God every effing day. Right. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts for, and prayers. I broke my damn I can't say toenail. what it is, but he knows. No, if you want my thoughts and prayers, you got to tell me the tea of what oh, I'm no. thought and praying for. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've been doing what I learned from Queen Charlotte. What's it? We need more I always God forget what she church. says. God in everything. Oh, sorrows, sorrows, mm. prayers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was Nostradamus a true and blue seer with prophetic dreams for the rest of time? Or was he just really good at guessing vague things in high quantities, some of which happened to come true? 
the world may never know. Every time I say that, it makes me want a tootsie roll pop. I know. Join us on Unmasked for what Nostradamus predicted about the end of days. You bet I looked up that. I love an apoca, a pop, a poca loftic. <laughs> play too much pokemon go i love an apocalyptic theory or those are my favorite movies too i love 2012 now i will say for him like in his defense it would be kind of difficult to be writing all this down because he lived in the 1500s right Mm -hmm. to like live in the 1500s and be trying to write stuff down that you're foreseeing in the future but not have like the vocabulary of what you're seeing or most people being able to read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like trying to write down like the visions of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but not like exactly knowing what you're seeing or the COVID pandemic and not right. exactly knowing right. what you're seeing. So that would be very difficult to do just to be a little caveat, but it's just so vague for me. And I know that dealing with some BS psychics that are out there that oh, yeah. are so effing vague and they're uh. like, I think the body is going to be by a body of water. And then, you know, when a body is found, they're like, see, I was right. Two miles away, there's a brook. And I'm like, there's always going to be some body right. of water. And I don't want nearby. to, like, I do believe in psychics and seers and all this stuff, sure. but I believe that there's also a lot of con people and people that just want to feel special and try to make themselves, you know, mm-hmm. there's yeah. other good things about you. Don't try to, you know, trick people yeah. or I, I dreamed of a river last night there's gonna yeah. be a flood somewhere yeah it's a big world there's always a flood somewhere mm-hmm. something's always happening right i just like specifics yeah like if you are a psychic detective i'm putting this in quotes if you're listening to the audio of this if you're trying to tell me i've had this issue before with a lot of different cases in fact wendy and i are working on a case currently and we're dealing with someone who worked with a psychic detective and they were trying to find a missing person, and they were trying to tell us about what the psychic detective told them, and they're like, now the psychic detective told us, and we're t- you just try to be respective, and they're like, they told us that she could be found by this river, and I was like, okay, we're at by the river. And Rivers like, are very long. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is a long river in California, and I thought... How many thousands of runs, rivers is there in California? Well, they, they said the name of the river, and the river runs throughout almost the entire state of California, And I was like, I need a location by this river. Like, unless Mm -hmm. you give me a location by this river, that means nothing to me. California is almost the whole, you know, width of America. You see a tree by the river. (laughs) Right. You see a rock by the river. What vision are you seeing by this river? Shane was associated at one point with a psychic, in quotes. Mm -hmm. And I had thought about trying to talk to her about Amber. Mm. And this person requested me as a friend on Facebook and I started watching, just, you know, watching. And she had said something on one time and I just commented, I thought about getting in touch with you. And she sends me a private message and says, I know you have. And I'm like, no, I don't believe one damn word you say. (laughs) Not one damn word. I left her on my Facebook for a really long time. I finally deleted her. I know who you're talking about. I did. I worked with her for a short (laughs) bit. Yeah, yeah, you know. I was like, what a mess. Bless her heart. Mm -hmm. Bless Bless her her heart. Bless her. Working with her did kind of open my eyes. And it's kind of what began my own inward spiritual journey and i do believe that most people do have some form of psychic gifts just if you you know recognize and you know practice them it's Mm -hmm. like any other muscle you have to work out at it but even when i go to that camp chesterfield a lot of those people were not like you know oh i woke up as a kid and i could see dead people like it was a something that was trained and exercised within them that they had to expand upon but then you get the ones that do that and just try to get money out of people i I don't like that right but but when i had that reading by chip i have no doubt in my mind that he is a a true I, i mean he nailed way too many Way too many things to... Chip's for, very specific. 
He is yes. very, he very specific. He gives you details. And you're just like, where in the crap did you pull that out? How the hell do you know that? And there yeah. was things that he said that I, I could not figure out what the crap he was talking about until on my way home. And he told me that that would happen. He'd say, you need to write everything down because there's something that might not, you know, click with you right now, but it will. Mm -hmm. And there was two things that in the things that he had said, I don't remember what they are now, but I have it all written down at home. But I was like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. And on the way home, I was like, oh, okay, I know what that one meant. <laughs> and it was probably two weeks later before I realized what the other one meant. Oh, good. But yeah, I finally did figure out everything that he was talking about. Well, our Bless Your Heart this week comes from Aberdeen, Scotland, where a 32-year-old man named Mike Scotland lives. What a funny name that to have funny. to live in Scotland. It is funny. Be like us if we lived on a houseboat. Mm -hmm. Starting in his late 20s, Mike began suffering from depression, and as it accelerated, he was seeking to end his own life. Well, that led him to the banks of the River Don with the intention of taking his life. And as he sat there, sitting among all the garbage that locals had dumped, Mike thankfully decided to keep living. Afterwards, whenever Mike walked past that spot, instead of thinking about the lowest point of his life, he only saw all of the trash that littered the river and its shoreline. And that's when he saw an opportunity and a purpose for himself along the shores of the River Don. He then grabbed a few trash bags and headed to the same spot and began picking up trash. As Mike cleaned, a biker stopped and asked if he could help, sparking a new friendship as well. As soon as he got back home, Mike decided to start a community cleanup that would meet weekly to remove the trash. At first, it was slow, with only a handful of people showing up to help. But now, they have over 100 volunteers who work tirelessly to keep the river and surrounding nature clean of all debris. To date, they have collected over 30,000 pounds of litter from the River Rhone and over 5,000 pounds of metal that's all been recycled. That's a dirty river. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks to their efforts, river otters have even began swimming in the river for the first time in over 40 years. And today, Mike is now married and a father of three. And he has taught all of his children the healing power of helping to heal the earth. Mike and his sons now go out dressed as Batman to fight the litter and keep their community safe and clean for everyone. How cute. Let's all give Mike, our environmental vigilante, a great big bless your heart. May we all remember that when we are at our lowest point, we still have a fulfilling purpose. Sometimes it can start by something as simple as picking up a piece of trash. Oh, that's good. Nice. Proud of myself with writing that one. I'm like, mm -hmm. that is so heartfelt. And I don't know why, Cam. I'm sorry when I said picking up a piece of trash. I looked right at you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to see somebody try to pick my ass up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's That's not very nice. When I got here this morning, there was a Lowe's truck backing up. <laughs> you weren't even here. And I made a Kim joke. I went out there to see if I needed to move my car to beep, beep. Beep. I was like, Kim must be here. Uh, I even looked around. I'm like, God damn, that was wasted. wasted. Wasted on nobody. I still giggled, though. Bless your heart. <laughs> I would say. And we want to give a big shout out to our amazing patrons. Hi, hello, and howdy. And thank you all for supporting us on Patreon. We hope you're enjoying our podcast and look forward to more exciting episodes in the future. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram or join us on Patreon for bonus episodes of Unmasked. You can find us under the username at It's Mr. Inc. And don't forget to join us on Shane and Josh's Rabbit Hole on Facebook and visit itsmrinc.com where you can find our little crystal dicks, Amazonite necklaces. We got tumblers, coffee cups, shirts, and 
Kim's big old silky DVDs. Ooh, baby. Still. They're still, still on there. there. Ain't nobody <laughs> want your draws. Nobody wants my draws. We also welcome your contributions. If you have any suggestions for mysteries, heartwarming stories, unusual criminal behavior, or anything that's left you shit and fire, please don't hesitate to share it with us. Shit and fire. Shit and fire. I'm shit and fire. Like after Taco Bell. No, that's not... Yeah. You guys have anything else? No, for I don't think so. Well, thank you all for joining us today, and bless your heart. See you next time. Right. Bye. Bye.